Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'adihi wa nasta'gfiruhu wa shadu an la ilaha illallah wa shadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa nabihu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking, alhamdulillah, Allah's guidance and Allah's forgiveness. Seeking Allah's protection, alhamdulillah, and bearing witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and Allah alone. And alhamdulillah, bearing witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is Allah's last servant and messenger. We ask Allah's peace and blessings on him and his family and his companions. And all of the NBA and also follow the way of truth until the day of judgment. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, we are brothers and sisters. Entering into, alhamdulillah, a great period. And to know, alhamdulillah, that Allah's Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave us some hope gave us some hope that in the lives that we live and the difficulties that we go through and sometimes that we deviate from what we should be doing that there is time for us to return to what is right i'm reminded that we are entering into a period now in the month of durhij but the Prophet ﷺ informs us about the opportunities that come when one responds to the call of Allah. That if you have the niyyah, the intention to answer that call, then Allah's response to you is forgiveness. That there is this connection alhamdulillah between what it is that I desire to do to please Allah and Allah's response to me to free me from the difficulties of this life and the hereafter. The Prophet alayhi informs us that Allah forgives sins 
from one salah to the next salah. So when I'm making salah, I'm worshiping Allah, I should pray as if I'm not going to live to the next salah. So I'm putting all of my effort, Ya Allah, please forgive me of my sin right now because I don't know if I'll live to have another chance. If I pray duhur, I don't know if I live to see asr. But I feel vindicated that Allah forgave me of my minor sins from the period of my previous prayer. Forgiveness, alhamdulillah, from one Jumwa to the next Jumwa. And so it is, we come to Jumwa today and we are asking Allah to forgive us and to set our affairs aright so that we might live to the next Jumwa. Knowing, alhamdulillah, that we will make mistakes and ask Allah to forgive us again. And then the Prophet ﷺ informed us that there is another period of forgiveness. And it is that forgiveness from the beginning until the time of Hajj. Inshallah, the reward, Hajj Mabrur and Wadam Mafur Usain Mashkurun, inshallah, for those who are performing their Hajj. Forgiveness from the beginning until Hajj, a lifetime of forgiveness. Now, alhamdulillah, I'm reminded this dialectic that you see, this comparison that's being made over and over again in Surah Al Hajj about the balance between belief and disbelief, between good and evil, between sin and forgiveness that the Prophet وسلم, performed Hajj only once in his lifetime. And from that, alhamdulillah, we walk in the footsteps of our father Ibrahim salam, that Allah might forgive us of our sins. And Allah reminds us in Surah Al-Hajj, the 22nd Surah, the 27th Ayah, and proclaim the pilgrimage among human beings, the Hajj, that they will come on foot and mounted on every kind of animal lean on account of its journey. And that those journeys were through deep distances, alhamdulillah, and mountain highways. Today there are many in our community, in this area and our community worldwide, who are leaving to go to perform this journey. Now, for us who live in an area where you just, Mecca is a few hours away, let us not forget that there are still people who they left to perform Hajj a month ago because they are still coming on that lean animal on account of his journey coming from all different parts of the world as they have been coming to the greatest reunion of humanity in the history of mankind every year. Wallahi, if you just think about Hajj as a global phenomenon, it is the largest mass movement of people annually. And the purpose is what? Only to say, I am answering the call made by Ibrahim Hanifa. And I want to remind you that Ibrahim salam, is commanded by Allah to make this call to all of humanity. Your neighbor, your neighbor who says, I'm a Christian. I'd like to invite you to go and tell your neighbor and your niya is that you want for your neighbor what you want for yourself. You see this whole exercise is about your niya, about what you intend when you answer the call from Allah. Tell your neighbor, don't you know this is the time of Hajj and Allah said proclaim the Hajj among mankind and since you're a human being that means it applies to you. They said, really, yes. This was the house established by Ibrahim and his wife, Hajar, and their son, Ismail. 
And Allah commanded them to call all of humanity and Ibrahim, he doesn't have a microphone. He doesn't have internet. He doesn't have Facebook, Instagram. He asked Allah, how can I call all of humanity? And Allah's response to him is a simple one. You call them and I will make them hear it. It is about your niya, the ability for you to say, I'm going to do what Allah wants me to do and I'll let Allah take care of the rest of it. If I want something, I ask Allah and I let Allah take care of the rest of it. Me, I have my amen and I follow it with amal salihat and I leave the rest to Allah. Ibrahim and his son, they build the Kaaba. They build it. This is Allah's command. They want their nears to obey Allah and they do what Allah asked them to do. How the people will come, Allahu Alam. Now we see the wisdom. Alhamdulillah that since that time over the millennia, millions come annually only to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe, you know, if Ibrahim could have seen the fruit of what Allah was asking him, subhanAllah. But Iman means that you do what Allah asks you to do without seeing the fruit. You do it because you know that this is right. Walhamdulillah, this journey of its intentionality, a duty to mankind, a universal gathering, walhamdulillah. And I want to let you know, subhanAllah, if you have never made hajj, please make the niyyah that Allah opened the door for you and accept you into his house. I don't care how much money you have, how much money you don't have, what your circumstance is. When the time of hajj comes, have the desire in your heart, Oh Allah, make a way for me that I might make that journey that is full of maqfirah, forgiveness. Oh Allah, I need your forgiveness. Please make your way available to me to go to your house so that I can get rid of a lifetime of sin. It is a journey where you have to get out of your comfort zone. When you go on Hajj, Maybe you, when you make Umrah, you're just in Mecca, you're staying in the one-star, two-star, three-star, four-star hotel. You're not out of your comfort zone yet. But alhamdulillah, the further you go in, the more of this society you remove. Alhamdulillah, to a simple garment of ikhram. In a state, alhamdulillah, where even to kill an insect unless it is a threat to you is not prohibited. It's prohibited, subhanAllah. A journey, alhamdulillah, that its objective is to stand on Arafah and to ask Allah for Allah's forgiveness that you can leave that desert as a rehearsal for the day of judgment. Where all of humanity will be laid out. There won't be any difference between one race and the other. There won't be any distinction between the rich and the poor. There won't be any difference between the young and the old. Everybody's going to be on the same level. And they're all going to be asking for the same thing. But alhamdulillah to leave that place. Knowing that Allah forgave you changes your trajectory. Maybe I can say it like this. If you ever owed somebody money and you see them, until you finish paying them off, you feel funny when you see them. You have a funny feeling. 
Maybe if you're driving on the highway and you're speeding or your headlight is out and you see the police officer, you have a funny feeling. When you're forgiven by Allah, you lose that funny feeling. You say, subhanAllah, when shaitan is inviting me to something haram, you say, hey man, I'm forgiven by Allah. You didn't know that? Shaitan said, I know you. I know, I know what you like, what you don't like. He said, yeah, but now Allah forgave me, buddy. You are on your own. Huh? Don't, call, don't drag me into that again. When you have a garment, yeah, Sheikh, that's, that's white. And you don't have any stain on it. Wallahi, you, you keep it. But if you have a one, two curry stain on it, then you wear it around the house. And then if you, you're eating, you spill something on it, no big deal. This is how you feel when you come from Hajj. Your garment is white again. That Alhamdulillah, you don't want to get any sin on it. Inshallah, for those who are intending for Hajj, Inshallah, may Allah reward you with the Hajj Mabroor. For those who are, don't know if they're going for Hajj, but they want to go, may Allah open the door to his house for you, Alhamdulillah, and then enter you, Alhamdulillah, into the day of Arafah. That Allah might accept from you a lifetime of sins to set you aright. And may Allah accept the dua for us on our behalf from those who make Hajj. That alhamdulillah Allah might accept their dua and forgive us of our sins. Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam al-Rasulihi kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'in baba. Subhanallah. When we think about Hajj, this fantastic gift that Allah has given us. Know that people who are going for Hajj now, they are a great gift for our community. When they go, they will go and make dua for us. They will take your name down, they'll put it there. And when they get to, to the, the, the house, they will make dua for you. Wallahi, and every Every salah there will be a janazah. And maybe in that janazah, 300,000 people will make dua for you. So there are some people who go for hajj just to die. So that, inshallah if Allah accept their, them to die on hajj, that they will have 300,000, 400,000 people make dua for them right there. But I want to remind you that Hajj is by Allah's invitation and that when Allah opens the door for you for opportunity, know that shaitan will come right behind and threaten you with loss. Know that whenever an opportunity from Allah comes to you, shaitan will come behind and threaten you with loss even for Hajj. I'll tell you a story of a young man. He was a college student. Dr. Hassan, he was at Howard University. And as a college student, Muslim, he made a lot of mistakes, sin. Young people, you know, they're going around and so I, as he started to become more committed to his deen, he started becoming concerned about these sins. And you know, shaitan is always reminding him, I don't know why you're trying to do that. I know you, I know how you are. You say, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm steadfast in Islam now. So he volunteers to teach in one of the community Sunday schools. He figured maybe I cannot teach adults, but Children, I can teach them about Islam, the fundamentals of Islam, alhamdulillah. Well, this young brother, he does such a good job. The people in the school love him and the children love him because he's young like them and he can explain Islam to them like a young person. 
So finally one day the organizers of the school, they say, we want you to come to the office, young man. First thing he's thinking, you know, he made some mistake. They said, no, 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 you're okay. But we received the gift to send some of our school teachers to go for Hajj, free of charge. The student says, oh, subhanAllah, but you know me, I, I just started here, you know, what about some of the older people? They, 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 they have more right than me. They said, no, we want you. So alhamdulillah, that young man, he goes back to his job and he tells the people at his job, I'm, I'm going to go for the pilgrimage to Mecca. And it's free. So I, that means I have to leave before everybody gets there and I come back after everybody's gone. Because the, the, the tickets are cheaper. I'll be gone for three weeks. Oh, now you know in America, right? Three weeks. Three weeks is not a vacation in America. Three, three weeks is unemployment. So they say, you know what? If you want to go, you can go. But we have to separate you from your employment. Say, really? Yeah. So if I go, they said, when you come back, hopefully we'll hire you back. But if you leave, you're going to be separated, you'll be unemployed. I don't want to ask you what you think he did. But SubhanAllah, he said, Allah has invited me for an all expense paid trip to his house. I'm not going to turn that down for no job. Somebody said, oh, by the way, you know, if you get separated from your job, you're eligible to tap into your retirement, your pension. Now, as a young person, he doesn't have much in it, but enough to make his wife and feel comfortable while he's gone. So he goes and he applies for his little pension investment, 402. What, maybe back then it might have been 401 but he goes ahead and, and applies for that and he tells his wife don't worry I got everything worked out I'm going for Hajj three weeks and they let me go from my job <laughs> she said well alhamdulillah honey if Allah has invited you and you have a free ticket and, and you work things out may Allah bless you even though she's nervous but she said, it's okay. Well, alhamdulillah, go. Boy, I'm sure shaitan is saying, I thought I really put it in front of him. Unemployment, you know, has to go home and tell his wife he doesn't have a job and, and to test him whether he'll pick the job or the thing. Well, alhamdulillah, he keeps checking off for Allah. When the young man gets to Mecca, they put him in a group house. And in the group house, no organization. But this young Muslim, he said, SubhanAllah, since Allah invited me to his house, I'm his servant. I'm Abdullah. Any hujaj is coming. Their, their room, they need a room. We go and we clean their room. They need food, we organize the food for the hujaj. They need transportation, we're running to find out if there's some transportation we can get to take them to different places. Alhamdulillah. Just humble servant of Allah. So one day the organizers of the invitation, they show up. And they have a list of the VIPs. They want to invite them to a big reception. And they go down the list. And they say, oh, we have one seat vacant. So the young brother, he goes to him and says, excuse me, are you from the, the Islamic organization that invited us? He said, yes, I am. He said, well, you know, we have a lot of issues here. and We've been trying to help the Hujaj uh, cleaning and whatnot. And you guys, we, we need some organization. He said, oh, you're that, you're, you're so-and-so, right? We heard about you. Get in the van with the VIPs. He said, I can't get in the van with the VIPs. I'm wearing the cleanup clothes. 
He said, look, brother, we don't have time for this. Just get in the van. Let's go. Subhanallah, they wind up putting him in, in, the, in the limo. And while they're driving, the host says, I have some exciting news for you. Said, so today, I have uh, some invitations to pray inside the Kaaba. All the VIPs, they have an invitation, but this invitation is for you, but I need a favor. I need you to, when you're inside the Kaaba, to pray for me and my family. Can you do that? The young brother said, of course I can do that, subhanAllah. And when he goes to the Kaaba and they open up the doors of the Kaaba to clean the Kaaba in the beginning of the month of Dhul Hijj, the young man, he looks down and he's just wearing the raggedy clothes. And he enters into the Kaaba. And he makes dua. And he thanks Allah that subhanAllah, Allah tested him. What was his niyyah? Was it to serve Allah? Or was it to worship people in a job? He tied his camel. And then he had tawakkul for Allah. That alhamdulillah, Allah made the call and he answered the call, Labaik Allahumma labaik, labaik la sharika lak labaik, in alhamda wa nimata lak wal mulk la sharika la. No doubt, this young person seeking to get off of him all of the sins of growing up in America. That alhamdulillah, Allah opened the doors of his house to accept that young man and his dua brothers and sisters in order for us to make those spiritual transitions we have to get out of our comfort zone that when Allah calls you to do something and you have the ability to do it but shaitan is going to come to you and threaten you you know, somebody offered you, they said, Akhi, look, we have an opportunity to do some good right here. Why don't you join us? Before you can say yes, shaitan has a thousand excuses why you shouldn't do it. Why don't you come and, and, and work here or volunteer here or serve here? He's like, but, 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 but. Wallahi, if you would just turn off the noise, make your niyyah to serve Allah, tie your camel, Allah can open doors for you that you cannot imagine. We ask Allah to open the doors of Mecca, alhamdulillah, for our hujaj. O oh Allah, open the doors for them and make their hajj easy. O oh Allah, open the way, alhamdulillah, to Mecca and shorten for them the distance, inshallah. O oh Allah, make the journey easy for the hujaj. O oh Allah, we ask that you forgive them of their sins, ya Allah. O oh Allah, answer their dua when they make a sincere dua on our behalf, ya Allah. O oh Allah, that you might forgive us of our sins. O oh Allah, cause us, alhamdulillah, to get out of our comfort zone, O oh Allah, let us take a step forward, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, to do something for you. O oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, that you might join our hearts together as husbands and wives, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, have mercy on us and our children, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, grant us rizq and tayyibun, Ya Allah. Grant us a righteous rizq, Ya Allah, righteous income, Ya Allah, that we might attend to our affairs. O oh Allah, help us to spend, alhamdulillah, in your cause. O oh Allah, we ask those of us who are suffering with diseases, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, grant us your shifa and your maghfira. O oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, for those who are suffering under oppression, Ya Allah, around the corner and around the world, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy to be upon them, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, help us, Ya Allah. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. O oh Allah, you are peace and the source of peace. Make us to be agents of your peace, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, that we might enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil. O oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, for your mercy and your peace. On the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and on his family and on his companions. And all of the MBR knows who follow the way of Haqqiyah Allah until the day of judgment.
أبي أقول قولي هذا استغفر لكم أكم صلاة